Throughout all levels of the sport, the baseball two-way player is an interesting phenomenon. In the early stages of baseball, like Little League, it's not rare to see the best hitter on the team also be the pitcher. And the coach's son. But the higher the baseball ranks, the less likely pitchers stay good hitters. It's like a fork in the road for players. Pitchers are usually known for being the worst hitters on the team. While position players only get brought to the mound when a team is absolutely getting hammered and doesn't want to waste anyone else in the bullpen on the specific game. Baseball hadn't had a true two-way player in a while, but just like in The Matrix, the one emerged. Shohei Otani is a creative player in real life. He's fast as hell, can hit at an exceptional level, and can also pitch really, really well. These traits got us at the Fumble Dimension Lab thinking. How many games can a team full of Otanis win? Will they make the playoffs? Will they win it all? It's an adventure that can only be experienced in the Fumble Dimension. This video will start with a Japanese baseball legend. I'm talking about Ichiro. When transitioning to a video role here, I wrote an article about what would happen if a team of Ichiros played a full season of MVP Baseball 2005. They won 102 games and took down the Yankees, Red Sox, and Giants to win the World Series. It was an interesting experiment with one of the best all-around baseball players of all time. But the thing is, it's not the ultimate baseball simulation. You see, Ichiro isn't a pitcher. In the simulation, I had to sift through Japanese All-Star Game highlights and a brief pitching stint from the Miami Marlins when he was 41 to try to analyze what pitcher Ichiro would have looked like. While the Ichiros were successful and won the World Series, he was only known for being a position player. And that's where Shohei Otani stands out. Shohei Otani is both a great hitter and pitcher at the major league level, something that rarely occurs. Yeah, there's Babe Ruth who started out as a pitcher and hit really well while he was still one. But then later into his career, he became a full-time position player. Then you have certain pitchers that have some really good hitting moments, but they're not consistent enough to crack the everyday batting lineup. That's where Otani stands alone. Being able to do basically everything well at the same time gives me hope for whatever we accomplish here. The power, speed, pitching acumen, the total package the ultimate baseball player 25 times over. And we'll be using MLB The Show 21 to do it. MVP Baseball 21 doesn't exist due to a multitude of reasons, making the show the most known baseball game out. For the longest time, it was a PlayStation exclusive, but thankfully that all changed. With The Show 21, we're going to be creating a new custom team of all Otanis, and we're going to give Otani his own custom stadium that we think will best help his skill set. Now, this is tricky for Otani because you want to create the perfect hitting and pitching park for him, and that does not sound possible. It sounds like we might have to lean towards one aspect. So what should our strategy be? So we have to make a ballpark for Shohei Otani. Do you have any ideas? I have one, all right? Okay. And this could be crazy. Tell me um, if you think this is crazy, but um, we can lay out the facts here, right? Because Shohei uh, hits a lot of home runs. He hits them very far, and he doesn't really discriminate where he hits them. Like, you look at the spray charts for his home runs, and they're in left field. He loves hitting them to, like, dead center or, like, left-right center. But yeah. he hits them, like, all over. And um, so there's really no way to cheat the dimensions one way or the other. And what I think would be interesting is if we pulled all the fences back as far as we possibly could, right? Okay. Because that would get to the point where like Shohei can easily hit it out. He's got the power, um, but not as many other hitters do, you know, because he just has all that extra distance that a lot of home run hitters who don't display, you know? Yeah, that's true. And I haven't, I haven't seen how far we can push the fences back. My only worry there is what if we push the fences too far back, right? So and obviously that would put Shohei, the pitcher, on the hook for a lot of that. And 
that would be pretty tough sledding for him. But I think on both sides of the ball, this is where his speed comes in. Because like, we don't really know how good of an outfielder Shohei would be. He's you know done some mop up work and inning or, or two here and there uh, in left or right field. But we know he's fast, right? Right. Um, and that's the one thing that people he almost all his other skills overshadow that. But like, this is a dude who like beats out infield grounders to first base, like. He's quick, quicker than most, I think. So, like, if he can display that speed in the field, um, good for him. You know, it's obviously his ERA is probably going to go up a little bit. But he is, I think, primarily a ground ball pitcher. So I don't see a whole lot of balls going past the outfielder's heads. Is there anything he's bad at? <laughs> I don't like, think so. I, I, I don't think he has a weakness. Following John's strategy, we decided to push the fences back, but not too far back. The farthest distance available was 500 feet, but we decided against that because that doesn't help Otani the pitcher or Otani the hitter, in our opinion. Unlike the golf course episode, <laughs> creating the stadium didn't take long because frankly I wanted to create something that looked so weird, and I did. Welcome to the Otani Zone. Fans from all over the world flock to this new ballpark, but you have to know someone to be invited there. Surrounded by the scape of frosted grass and one of the weirder ballpark designs, the Otani Zone is instantly the most interesting park in baseball. The Los Angeles Angels have somehow disappeared and no one seems to know where they've gone. Team Otani has replaced them with new jerseys and a new logo. The Otani clones are ready to wreak havoc on the league. According to some preseason rankings, we're the fourth best team in baseball. And that's pretty cool. All right, I've talked to you enough about this preseason stuff. Let's grab us some peanuts and cracker jacks, play ball. Let's just start the season, shall we? Game one. In the first inning, we have a few issues with catching. We have a called third strike and a pass ball, which gives me some reason for concern. If Otani isn't a good catcher, then we'll definitely have some problems when runners are on base. The field dimensions might also have a negative effect due to the fact that there's so much more space, which will give both us and the other team a higher chance for more inside the park home runs. Our pitching manager checks on Otani in the third inning. I have no idea who the fuck this is. In the ninth inning, the Otanis have a chance to rally and win the game against the White Sox, and then the unthinkable happens. An opening day walk-off home run at the Otani zone. Wow. Amazing. In game one, the Otani struck out 15 batters, but also struck out 17 times. Jesus Christ. Game five. I take a look into the crowd and I see that even though this is a home game, that there are no Team Otani fans anywhere to be seen. This game is a sellout crowd for the Houston Astros. Nevertheless, the Otanis prevail especially thanks to the first over-the-fence home run at the Otani zone. Otani hits one 480 feet to just clear the fence. There was also a 467-foot home run that didn't leave the ballpark. Thankfully, Otani's speed makes up the difference there. Game 7. This is the first road game for the Otanis, and I'm curious to see how they'll do in a ballpark that's not theirs. They walk it off on us. Tough scene. Game 11. The Otanis combined to strike out 15 batters and we were one home run away from their first shutout of the season. The team then returns home to beat the absolute breaks off of the Twins for three games, outscoring them 28 to four. 
The Otanis combine for a complete game two hitter against the Rangers and then proceed to drop the next two games to make them 12 and seven so far. Not bad. Game 20, the Otanis strike out 14 batters and only allow two hits all game. They also strike out 12 times. I'm starting to see a pattern here. The Otanis also lose the next three games in a row, which takes us out of first place from the AL West for the moment. Game 27. In the 13th inning against the Mariners, Otani throws a pass ball to load the bases. With one out in the bottom of the 13th, the Otanis need a miracle. And they freaking get it. The Otanis follow that inning up with three runs, including this beautiful moonshot to give them the lead for good. The Otanis end April 16 and 11, good for first place in the American League West. This allows us to also look at the stats for the team. Kofi and I are fairly confident that this Otani team is going to break some records, or at least come close. So throughout this season, I'm going to try and track their progress in a number of statistical categories against all-time records and see how close they are to making history. I say try in air quotes because, well, we need to know how many games they've played at any given point, right? To do that, I need to rely on the season calendar. And on the season calendar, games just vanish here and there. I'll drop a spoiler here. At the end of the regular season, the calendar will only show the Otanis as having played 151 games. The season is 162 games long. So there are nine missing games throughout the season. We played them, they're just not showing up there. For our purposes, that makes tracking progress a little bit more difficult. We're just gonna have to do our best and guess when these games were played, which is a pretty unscientific solution, but we're doing our best. More importantly though, how are sports games still screwing up very basic things like this in the year 2021? Give me a TI-83 in about 15 minutes and I could write a program that counts the number of games more effectively than this. We're used to this from EA Sports who got so lazy that they stopped even pretending to give a shit about their product years ago, but Sony, I expected better from you. Anyway, these are the all-time records we're going to measure the Otanis against. Counting stats are way more fun to track than rate stats, so that's what we're going to do. Most of these are offensive categories. The one pitching category we're going to track is total strikeouts, a record set by the Astros in 2018. Some of these categories seem impossible to break. The 1894 Orioles hit 150 triples, basically one per game, which seems impossible in modern baseball. In 1896, they stole 441 bases, which would mean almost three per game, but what the hell, I'll track them anyway. Of course, we're only one month into the season right now, so I'll check back in May with an update once we've got more of a sample. In game 34, we see the first player to hit a ball out of the Otani zone that's on the away team. The perpetrator is Cody Bellinger at a whopping 480 feet. The center fielder Otani malfunctions mid-game, which is weird because Otani is listed as a center fielder. Well, the position player Otani is listed as a center fielder. I wanted to specify that. Just like in real life, the Dodgers are fucking stacked, so of course this is going to be a tough game. The Otanis are the fourth best team in the game, so if I had to guess, the Dodgers are one of those teams ahead of them. Yep, I was right. The Dodgers, Padres, and Yankees are all ranked higher at the moment, which is something to look out for. After that loss, the Otanis proceed to lose five straight games and fall below 500 for the first time this year. The pitching doesn't seem to be the problem, but it looks like all of the Otani bats have gone cold. The top of the order is in dire straits. And I, I'm a little bit worried. Game 39. The Otanis fight back in Fenway thanks to two monster home runs and end their seven game losing streak. They proceed to sweep the Boston Red Sox to get back to 500 and one game behind the Astros. Having Houston in our division is not a good thing, and I'm worried that if we don't win the division, then we don't make the playoffs. Just like the Angels haven't done since 2014. I could have left that out of the script. I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. Game 40. 
Down 3-2 in the ninth, the Otanis hit a walk-off against Cleveland to win a squeaker. I feel like inside the park home runs to left field are rare, but in the Otani zone, it's starting to become normal. I love that most home runs here are a race against the clock. How fast are you to run around the bases in time? It feels like a slow pitch softball game in a big park. The Otani strike out 18 batters and score all of their RBIs from home runs and sweep Cleveland. Game 44. First baseman Otani is having a rough go at it with a pair of errors today but both errors seem fairly routine and preventable. Which is not, which is not good. These lapses in fielding are happening often enough to worry me a little bit, to be honest. Game 53, the Otanis are dropping the ball again and just being absolutely weird on the defensive end. Here's a weird thing. A batter foul tips the ball against the Otanis, and the catcher doesn't flinch at all. The pitcher decides to sprint to the ball, even though it's like two feet behind the catcher already. It's, I don't think it's the pitcher's job to go get this ball, because he's not the closest defender to the ball. Huh? So, we've got two months worth of games in the books. Let's see if we're on track to bust any records. First, the hits record. The bottom bar represents the all-time record of 1,783 hits. The blue in the top bar represents how many the Otanis have racked up, and the red represents the number they're on pace for. At this rate, they're going to fall a few hundred short of the record, but we'll still keep an eye on it. Now, total bases. This is always a fun stat, because it just tracks how many bases you get out of swinging the bat and running around. None of that walks nonsense. The record is 2,832, and it just might be under attack from the Otanis, who are on pace for 2,800. We'll keep tracking this one for sure. Now the boring one. Walks. Alright, we're already falling way off pace here. There is no way in hell we're hitting the all-time mark of 765 walks, or even getting close. I'm gonna call this one and stop tracking it. Walks are boring anyway. Who cares? Sad to say, runs are a similar story. We're on pace for 749 runs, which is not even exceptional territory. Not only is that mile short of the record, it's a decidedly average total for a team in the year 2021. I would have expected far more out of a team full of Shohei Otanis. Is this cause for concern? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. We'll stop tracking this one. No chance we're breaking this record. Now doubles ought to be interesting to track, especially in the part Kofi built. The Otanis are falling short of the pace they'd need to break the doubles record, but I'm still clinging to hope here. That outfield is so cavernous and double friendly. I'd say that the triples record is also in play, except <laughs> this sweater was stretched out beyond recognition more than 100 years ago. The 1894 Orioles hit 150 triples. Just to give you an idea of how much baseball has changed, the real life 2021 Orioles hit just 15. The Otanis are on pace for 49 triples, which is a lot and probably enough to lead the majors, but we'll stop tracking this record. There's just no way. You want to know what else the 1800s Orioles ruined? The pursuit of the stolen base record. Shohei Otani really is one of those athletes who's great at everything he tries. In the real life 2021 season, he led the Angels in stolen bases, but in terms of the all-time record, we're getting boat raced. We're not on pace to break any of the records I've gone over so far, but I saved the best for last. The single season team home run record was set at 307 by the 2019 Twins. About a third of the way through the season, the Otanis are on pace for 296. Definitely within striking distance. Already, our decision to pull back the fences is paying off. Otani has uncommon moonshot power that allows him to clear those fences, but of course, the outfield is so cavernous that his line drives can totally get lost out there. And thanks to his speed, he can leg it all the way around the bases. An inside the park home run is still a home run. All we need to do is up the home run pace just a little bit to break this record. And finally, let's see how things are looking on the mound. As pitchers, the Otanis are on pace to break one record, the strikeout record. So far, they've registered 615 strikeouts, which is nearly 12 per game, which is ludicrous. This is very, very good for us. If I could pick any one category for this team to excel in, it would be strikeouts. They're so much more valuable in a huge outfield like theirs, where a lot of would-be outs figure to end up as hits. The best way to neutralize that advantage for their opponents is to simply strike them out and not let them put the ball in play to begin with. So that's where we stand at the end of May. At the end of each month, I'll check back in and see how some of these record chases are doing. Game 55. 
First base, Otani drops another ball. Luckily, it doesn't matter as the Otanis dominate in their first National League matchup in a while. This kind of reminded me of the advantage that Team Otani would have in the National League. With one Otani, the best course of action is to put them on an American League team so he can be in the lineup as much as possible. With a team of 25 Otanis, it would then turn into an advantage. Game 57. Nothing much here uh, against the Mariners. Otani hits a moonshot that phases back through the wall. I don't know. I just wanted to, to mention that. Game 63. We have a five game lead over the Astros and are the only team in the AL West over 500. However, none of the Otanis are leading in all-star votes, mostly because they're all listed as center fielder and splitting the votes. Even though they mainly play other positions, they're still getting votes at center field. Game 79. In our first game against the Yankees this season, the Otanis hit four home runs and allowed two hits to the Yankees. However, they give up three runs. So the Yankees had more runs than hits thanks to poor fielding yet again. We're exactly halfway through the season and the Otanis are 49 and 32. Good for nine games ahead of the Mariners. And we're now the second highest ranked team in the game. At the end of June, with the season about halfway over, here's how the record chases are shaping up. As you can see, the Otani's hits total is still lagging far behind a record-breaking pace. Same story with doubles, but I think we should keep tracking all these categories, because I found something pretty interesting. Here are those five totals relation to their respective records, percentage-wise. That dotted black line represents the pace the Otani's need to match to stay on target. Simply put, all five of those lines are going to need to find their way above that dotted line by the end of the season to break records. On the mound, the pitcher Otanis are incredibly consistent. It's the only line here that's almost perfectly straight, and the whole time it's hovered safely well above the 100% line. It's a safe bet we're going to break that record. Look what happened in June with the rest of these records. The Otanis up the pace in each one. After falling behind pace in the home run department in May, they've exploded in June with 66 homers. The coolest record to break as a hitter is the home run record, and the coolest record to break as a pitcher is the strikeout record. If this team can sustain this momentum and somehow break both records, Shohei Otani will cement his status as the coolest baseball player of all time. We've made it to the All-Star Weekend, and apparently members of our squad have made the Home Run Derby. We have two Otanis in the Home Run Derby. This is sick! The first Otani loses, while the other beats Ronald Acuna Jr. to advance. Then we lose to Cody Bellinger by one home run. Bellinger. Chris Bryant wins the Derby for the Chicago. Ooh, 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 ooh sorry. I'm so sorry, Cubs fans. It also looks like we have one of the Otanis in the All-Star game, but not as a pitcher, but as a center fielder. Knowing what we know about the All-Star votes, it's cool to see it all work out somewhere, at least. And we have the option to sign our draft picks. None of them are named Shohei Otani, so I don't care. The Otanis hit five home runs against the Rockies in the first game of the series and strike out 14 batters in the process. The Otanis have games like this often where they're just dominant on both sides of the plate. The Otanis end July with a 62 and 44 record. After a big June, the Otanis cooled off in most statistical categories in July. They would have needed to catch fire in the hits and runs department to threaten the all-time record. We shouldn't feel bad though, since no team has ever come close to breaking either of those records in about 100 years. But they're still on pace to break the home run record, and on the mound, the strikeouts record. The total bases record isn't quite there, but it's real close. We're probably just a couple of big games from getting there, but we'll have a better picture once we check back in a month from now.
The Otani scores 16 runs on 15 hits, which I'm guessing doesn't happen that often in baseball, but I'll, I'll ask the Dorktown crew if that's normal or not. We have another three game play day with the Dodgers, a likely World Series candidate and the best team in the game right now. This is our biggest test so far. In the first game, we give up four home runs to the Dodgers. The next two games, it's the same result. The Dodgers have swept the Otanis. Now the good news is that these games were close. The bad news is that we still freaking lost all three games. We're the second best team in the league so far. And the Otani Dodgers World Series looks like a pretty good bet. But I don't bet. Oh my god, you just thought about betting, didn't you? Never bet on the fumble dimension. In terms of the all-time record chases, we're now going to narrow our scope to home runs, total bases, and pitching strikeouts. At the plate, the Otanis are just about a sure thing to break the home run record, and they're getting so, so close to the pace they need to break the total bases record. Funny enough, both those records are currently held by the 2019 Twins. Since they're the ones we're aiming for, let's take just a moment to get to know those guys. Those 2019 Twins had eight guys who hit at least 20 home runs. There have been lots of teams over the years who would be over the moon to just have like three guys like that. As an aside though, look at those names. Nelson Cruz is, I'd argue, the only big name on this list. The only guy with actual star power. You could argue then that the Otanis have as many big names as this team did. Despite, you know, <laughs> literally only having one name. Anyway, one month from now, we'll know for sure how many records we've broken. Game 147. I want to make a note of this, and I think it's a really unique part of the Otani zone. When someone hits a ball over the outfield, and it would be out in any other park except for like Comerica, we all know the ball will probably drop and play. However, as a base runner, you can't run because you risk being doubled off. So during big fly balls like this, a runner will have to stand still for a really long time. It feels like a longer time than most situations to find out if the ball will stay in play or not. And this will be interesting to see if it'll be a big factor come playoff time. In the same game, the Otanis one hit the Oakland A's, showing that they have the capacity to reach another level pitching wise. That or the A's fucking suck. We've clinched the division and everyone else in our division is eliminated from contention. Both of our minor league teams have secured buys. We finish the season 97 and 65 and move on to face the White Sox in the ALDS. Two Otanis finish second and third in the Cy Young race, respectively, while a created Otani wins Rookie of the Year. Two pitchers were considered as well as one hitter, which the game doesn't seem prepared for. And the Otanis didn't win a single Silver Slugger or the Gold Glove Award. Single Silver Slugger, single Silver Slugger. <laughs> Yo, that's hard to write. Why did I write that? Well, first the bad news. The Otanis fell just barely short of breaking the single season total bases record of 2,832. They made it to 2,799, which was about 99% of the way there. But that's a pretty easy pill to swallow because we have officially smashed the all-time record for home runs hit and strikeouts thrown. But as decisively as the pitcher Otanis broke the strikeout record, I think they left a lot on the table. I think we could have struck out way more if the team actually understood the players it had. This pie chart represents the distribution of innings pitched by every Shohei Otani. It looks way too much like a conventional team's distribution. You can see four big slices from the starting pitchers, a few kind of big ones for platoon starters, and a handful of smaller slices for relievers. This is a dumb distribution for a team that's 100% made up of clones of the exact same guy. Ideally, you'd have 25 slices that are more or less equal, with every Otani on the roster throwing somewhere around 60 innings. You gotta figure that with that kind of rest, they could have thrown fireballs all season. Regardless, the record was broken by a huge margin. Good stuff. Now for the dingers. Only 14 real-life teams have ever hit as many as 250 home runs in a season. These Otanis hit 335, destroying the record set by those twins in 2019. Now, non-baseball fans might wonder, Major League Baseball has been around for well over a century. How come seven of these teams, fully half of them, were teams from 2019? What was going on that year? Oh, nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> 
But let's take a moment to revel in this. A team full of pitchers did this. Pitchers! Shohei Otani possesses a set of talents held by no other human being on the planet. The Otani squad struck out more batters than any other team in history and hit more home runs than any other team in history. The question is, do we regard this as an individual achievement or a team achievement? Technically, it's a team achievement, but it's a team made up of a single individual. This is an important distinction because baseball dampens individual accomplishments like no other sport does. If you're a brilliant NBA or NHL player or an incredible quarterback, your team will almost certainly be a serious title contender. But Shohei Otani has been a member of the real-life Los Angeles Angels for four seasons, and they've had a losing record in all four of those seasons. They've been blessed with one of the most electrifying athletes the sport of baseball has ever seen, and it just has not registered. It does not matter. Baseball simply works differently. And that is my chief concern as we head to the playoffs. We won 97 games, that's great, but the table is completely reset once the playoffs begin. The team with the best regular season record usually doesn't win the World Series. In fact, it sometimes feels almost arbitrary, as though the team that crash lands into the playoffs has just as much of a shot as the most dominant regular season team. So yeah, getting these Otanis to the playoffs does feel like a roll of the dice, but it's more than Shohei himself has ever gotten. In the real world, it's quite possible, as unbelievable as it seems, that we will never ever see the real-life Shohei Otani in the playoffs. This video game simulation might be all we get. And it should be stressed here that we have not predetermined any kind of outcome. We're running this experiment once and once only. If the Otanis wash out in the first round, that's just something we'll have to live with. Come on, baseball gods. At least give them this. At least give us this to be continued. Secret Base has its own Twitch channel now. If you ever want more content from us, you can go over there and watch us mess with even more video games. We're already doing so much cool stuff over there from Fumble Dimension style simulations to watch parties and everything in between. If you don't want to be left out, click on the Twitch link in our description to never miss out on these weekly streams. Also, follow our Twitter account and our TikTok account. Bye.